In this short video tutorial, I will show you the Exoplan Implant Planning and Guide Creator workflow. The software is intended to be used only by dental professionals with sufficient medical training in dental implantology and surgical dentistry. Do not use the software or DICOM viewer for diagnostic purpose. In the Dental DB, you can type in the patient name, you can define a birth date, select a work type, and add notes. After saving the project, you can start the implant planning workflow with the corresponding button. Details on how to set up a case in the Dental DB will be shown in a separate video. Now I will continue by loading our demo case John Doe. To start the implant planning workflow, click the implant planning button. The implant planning workflow will be shown in detail in a separate video. If you have an integrated scanner, your optical scans will be loaded automatically. If not, you'll be prompted to locate and load the optical scans manually. Load the patient DICOM data. 3D CT input data shall have sufficient spatial resolution and be of high quality to allow to recognize all relevant anatomical structures. At the top of the screen, the DICOM control is open. With the DICOM control, you can decide how to view your DICOM data. The details of the DICOM control will be explained in a separate video. In this next step, I can define the surface threshold for soft tissue, bone and enamel by moving the slider and clicking the corresponding button. Continue with Next. In the next workflow step, you can change the axial and view direction of the patient. This is in most cases not necessary. Continue with Next. In the first part of the alignment step, place the markers at the same place in both views. To get a good initial alignment, I select points that are well visible in both the DICOM and the optical scan. I make sure to place the markers far away from each other and at different heights if possible. If the three-point alignment looks good, start the best fit alignment. You can also improve the alignment with the tools available under the Improve Accuracy tab. Aligning CT data and optical scan is a sensitive process which must be performed accurately. Evaluate the alignment result with help of the color scale. If you are satisfied with the alignment, select Acceptable Alignment. In the panoramic curve definition step, use the control points to define the panoramic curve. You can move the whole curve with the red control point in the center. Change the curve by moving control points and add points by clicking on the orange curve with the left mouse button. In the wizard window, you can change the X-ray noise threshold. Continue with Next. When marking the nerve canal, I first locate the mental foramen in the 3D view and click it with the mouse wheel to center the secondary views to this point. I then proceed to mark the canal using both the blue curve cut view and the panoramic view. When marking the curve cut view, I hold the shift key down while clicking with the left mouse button to make the view jump along the curve. You can scroll the secondary views by holding the right mouse button down and moving the mouse. Change the diameter of the nerve with the slider in the wizard window. Continue with Next. In the next step, I can place a model tooth to be used as a guideline when placing my implant later. Just place the tooth roughly with two clicks. The placement can be corrected in the next step. If you want, you can change the library to get a different tooth shape. Continue with Next. In the Tooth Placement step, you can correct the placement using both the 3D view and the secondary views. The tooth placement will be explained in detail in a separate tutorial. Continue with Next. In this next step, you can define a density threshold by moving the slider to show the denser parts in blue and the less dense parts in red. Continue with Next. Now we are in the implant positioning step. Select which implant you want from the drop-down list. 
you can mark your favorites by clicking the star. Those will then be at the top of the list. Or you can type in some letters to search in the list. I first place the implant roughly in the blue curve cut view. As soon as the implant is placed, the implant focused secondary views open. I first make sure that the implant is placed in a way that fits the tooth placement I made earlier. Then I switch to the implant cross view to check the placement in the bone. I can easily correct the placement using the arrows. To change the implant diameter, I hold the shift key down and scroll the mouse wheel. To change the implant length, I drag the arrow down. You can also change the implant length by holding the control key down and scroll the mouse wheel. You can of course also use the drop down menus in the wizard window. If I place my implant too close to the nerve canal I marked in a previous step, a collision warning is shown when I try to proceed with next. I must fix that situation before I can continue. To rotate the secondary view around the implant, keep the right mouse button pressed and move the mouse. Exoplan does not verify if you have placed an implant at an eligible position for the selected tooth number. When I'm happy with the placement, I continue to the sleeve placement step. If you want to, you can skip this step and finish the planning without placing a sleeve. In that case, the sleeve placement will be the first step when starting the guide creator workflow. I will place the sleeve right now. Since I have placed an implant for which there is a fully guided workflow integrated, the software automatically places the corresponding sleeve. For this implant, there are three types of sleeves available for the guided workflow from the implant manufacturer, and the guided pilot drill is automatically placed. In the drop down menu, you can select one of the other guided sleeves if you want. In the top drop down menu, you can also choose other compatible libraries. If you select a universal sleeve for pilot drilling, you can place it freely to fit the drills you will use. I will select the fully guided 5mm sleeve from the original manufacturer in this case. This sleeve has three fixed positions. I take the top one so that the sleeve doesn't touch the gingiva. The Show Additional Information button opens the implant control where you can find detailed information about the sleeve. Under the Implant tab, you can find details about the placed implant as well. I continue with Next and it is time to approve the planning. When that is done, the planning result files are written and the implant planning is finished. I can now select to continue to the surgical guide design. Please note that manufactured surgical guides for endosseous dental implant placement are classified as medical devices by the FDA. Version 2.3 and earlier versions are not to be used for indentulous patients or patients with insufficient dentition that do not allow a stable fit of a tooth retained surgical guide. The first step is to design the material holding the sleeve, the sleeve mount. Use the sliders to change the design. If you want the sleeve mount to rest on the gingiva, increase the height value. In the merge step at the end, the intersecting parts will be cut away so that the guide will fit on the stone model. In this case, I'd like to keep a distance between the sleeve and the gingiva, so I'll set the height value to the lowest possible. It will still cover the full length of the sleeve. The clearance above is the red cylinder above the sleeve mount. As default, this value is locked to follow the minimum base thickness. I will unlock it to make the cylinder a little bit bigger. The part of the stone model that lays within the cylinder will be free from guide material. The radial sleeve offset value creates an offset between the sleeve and the guide material. Finally, you can place a rotation marker on the sleeve mount. 
This marker correlates to the implant connection of the placed implant. You can select between marking the vestibular hex angle or the vestibular hex edge. Continue with Next. Now it is time to create the surgical guide bottom. With the sliders you can define the offset between the stone model and the guide, and you can decide how much undercut you want to allow. I set the insertion direction from view with the corresponding button and apply it. The darker areas on the model will be blocked out. When the bottom has been generated, you can use the freeforming tools to fine-tune the design if you want. Continue with Next. Next step is to draw curves to design the surgical guide top. If you draw just one curve like this, the guide top will pull down to the gingiva. I want to keep the distance between the gingiva and the sleeve free from material, so I will first draw one curve around the molar. I finish the curve with a double click, then I draw a second curve starting at the premolar. For stability of the guide, I go all the way to the K9 in the fourth quadrant. I finish with a double click and press apply. You can correct the shape by adding points or dragging existing points. With the sliders you can set the thickness and the level of smoothing of the guide. When the surgical guide bridges over multiple missing teeth, make sure that the solid fit of the surgical guide is still ensured and that it does not bend under load. In particular, this applies for multiple K9 and incisors. Continue with next. In the next step, you can place windows for fit check. You can move it by holding the left mouse button and rotate it by holding Ctrl and the left mouse button. Check the result with the preview button. You can also place support structures and add text to the guide. As a default, the patient name is placed, but you can change it if you want. I continue with Next, and the guide is merged. I can now do some freeforming if I'd like. All freeforming functions will be explained in a separate tutorial. Some areas, like the material holding the sleeve in place and the parts touching the model, are not possible to change. I continue with Next, and the surgical guide result files are generated. The first page in the surgical guide report includes patient information. Thereafter follows information about the planned implant, sleeve, and drill kit to use. The finished guide design is saved as an STL in the project folder. Verify the surgical guide manufacturing process and the surgical guide before using it for treatment of patients. Thank you for watching.